And he wrote this book about fasting, uh, intermittent fasting, and how the whole paradigm of calories in, calories out right. yeah. is nonsensical. Right, right. So uh, okay. it's an awesome book. I'll be giving it away to, uh, later in the program. Uh, but um, now I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker. Our guest, tonight's guest, received his MD degree in 1975. He's uh, board certified in cardio, uh, cardiovascular surgery, has a doctorate in natural medicine, is the author of Surviving Cancer and Survival on an Island. He's the founder and medical director of a New York City-based age management and regenerative medicine practice. It is uh, my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Joseph Basilovac. Welcome. Thank you, Alex. You know, and I didn't this I didn't catch this, but Survival on an Island and Surviving Cancer, both of those have survive in them. And basically that's human health is we're here to survive no matter what. And of course, this one here, I started this book with the onset of the coronavirus because I live here in the epicenter and following it journaling wise, what was going on in my life, what I was seeing on the street and health wise, how do I approach patients, this and that, and seeing how the thing developed. And also following the story of the politics and everything else that's going on there, you know. Um, but along the way, what I found is that as you do this, uh, giving health information to patients and personal health. I mean, you know, tonight, CBS, oh, they had Dr. Max Gomez, and I, I appreciate his opinions and things. But they were talking about types of blood and whether that predicts more, whether you're going to get the virus or not. You know, that's only one item. You're talking about one item out of a thousand. How important is that? Because here, here's things that we have learned uh, with this. And here's the thing that's, that I look at is everybody thinks that information is immediately available. And it's true. And, you know. The thing about it is we're learning about this. This is the first time we've ever tested during a endemic or a pandemic, you know, to know what does this incidence mean? And, you know, a very simple thing is, of course, in New York, we had a big instance back in the spring and the prediction was there'll be another boost in the fall. Well, the thing that you saw was a lot of mortality, but when you look in hindsight, those were handicapped people. They were nursing home people and they weren't properly protected, okay? So you hit a big bump in the mortality. Now the second wave starts to come around. People go to church, they have little things at school and this and that. Oh, and somebody infected 12 people or whatever. You look at this, okay, the incidence goes up a little bit, but you look at the hospitalizations and the mortality, they're way down in comparison to what went on with the first wave. So. Uh, the thing that I look at is we live in a world, there's a lot of viruses and we have to learn to live with them. And as long as there's viruses and people, those viruses will affect, uh, you know, can infect us. And we have to either resist it or develop antibodies to be protected in the long run. So, you know, uh, there's a few things that I presented early on in the book and you know, you get, do this here. Okay. Anyway, just, you know, some common sense things. Um, coconut oil contains lauric acid. If you ingest that, your body converts it to monolaurin. Okay. Monolaurin has a tremendous antiviral quality. So you take a scoop and there's these little waxy things. You take a scoop and wash it down once a day. Maintenance, good maintenance during a viral endemic. Okay. If you get sick, then go three or four times. It kills hepatitis virus, HIV, anything, okay? How about vitamin D? You know, people talk about the blacks, older people that have succumbed to the virus. And you look at their vitamin D levels, all these levels are in the gutter. Vitamin D is important as far as immunity and resistance. So, it's something medicine has never really pushed as far as 
vitamin D levels, but it's very, very important. It's something we learned from this pandemic. You know, another one are things like, uh, I, I take care of a lot of military guys, all right? How about training dogs to sniff Corona, all right? Madison Square Garden has got a big event. You got a dog that can sniff 700 people per hour going into a door and he can keep people out. All right, now everybody has the big event, okay? And you do what you can, social distancing or whatever you need to do. Okay, afterwards, you've got to clean that place up. After you clean it up, run the dogs through there. Oh, they found a spot you didn't clean up very well. I mean, so simple. And to me, why not use it for a restaurant at the end of the day? And stuff like that. Ultraviolet light. This kills viruses. So the school, classroom, all right? You shine or, uh, you know, you shine ultraviolet lights at night or... You know, those little robots they have that vacuum and stuff like that? They have ultraviolet robots. Now you can put them in a restaurant, boom, 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 boom. You know, they're, they're killing everything along the way. All of these things are some so simple measures. Here's a very simple one that I found, you know, from the British health system. They were trying to protect their people that were working in the hospitals and working with coronavirus patients. So what can we do to hold this down? So if you know this betadine spray, Spray or this betadine solution is kind of a purplish thing you're using on wounds and things like that. It's got iodine in it. Okay. What they did was they took one third volume of betadine, two thirds of salt water, and made a nasal spray. Okay. They went spray, spray, and spray them out. For three hours, there was no viral growth because the iodine is a natural, it's in the same family as chlorine, but it's, you know, it's tolerable to us and it kills viruses. Well, think about this. You got kids going to school. Jimmy, before you leave, spray, spray, spray. Comes home at three o'clock, spray, spray, spray. Goes to bed at night. Good night, Jimmy, spray, spray, spray. To me, these are so simple things. And I guess part of the deal socially is, particularly in New York where you've got millions and millions of people is getting people to comply with any of that stuff. But it's so simple, at least, you know, even the teachers could spray the kids. You know, if the parents wouldn't do it at home, spray the kids when they get to school. I don't know. These are, to me, these are such simple things, but uh, anyway, you know, um, you had mentioned something about exosomes and what I try to push with people. Okay. My background is this. I learned conventional medicine I, to be a cardiovascular surgeon. Okay. Halfway through a 30 year career doing cardiovascular surgery near Kansas city, I'm frustrated. Patients are coming to me for surgery. They're on 20 different meds or they, oh, I went to the chiropractor or I had this acupuncture or whatever. And they seem to have some results. Well, at that point, I obtained a doctorate in natural medicine. So I practiced conventional medicine, natural medicine together a little bit for a while. And then after practicing for 30 years, um, this was 13 years ago, I got an offer to come to New York City and open an age management practice. So I haven't operated since. Now, what do you mean by age management? Keeping better quality of life and better health, okay? So what started off there was I'm getting retired NFL players, retired NBA players, okay? And they, they're beat up. And I started doing exosomes and stem cells and joints and soft tissue and stuff, okay? Then I got involved with military special forces guys uh, coming back injured. And this started to include traumatic brain injury things. So I was taking care of soft tissue things and they addressed me, hey, how about trying something with the stem cells for TBI and things like that. So I got into doing some systemic treatment with exosomes. And basically what I look at is this is nothing magic. Stem cells are not magic bullets. No, what they are, it's this is wound healing. Something bothering you, infection or an injury, it's wound healing. And that's my surgeon part coming out. And what happened to me, I started following some wound care principles when I was giving stem cells and exosomes, such as shining a red light at a certain wavelength that ignites nitric oxide levels, either in a joint or in other parts of the body, which immediately says to the body, we need to heal. So you follow it with stem cells and the body's going, come on, come on, okay? Same thing with the exosomes. The exosomes are simply growth factors that you're giving fertilizer to feed the stem cells, get them going, doing their thing. So it's not only that, 
there are other biochemicals that um, we have. Let me see if I can pull this up. Okay. I don't know if you can see this or not. Okay. This is the Krebs cycle. In middle school, we were supposed to learn the Krebs cycle because this little cycle is the way that the body is able to make energy, each cell. If the cell is making normal energy, it works normally. If it doesn't, you get a chronic condition or maybe even a cancer. Now, and I can't see, okay, I think right here is, you see where it says NAD? Okay, all right. NAD is simply a protein that, it's an enzyme that helps scoot that activity around. And as we get older, NAD levels get lower and lower and lower. And by the time you're 50, they're significantly lower. And if you are an executive, I take care of a lot of CEOs and they're out, you know, eating every night. Um, they're, and drinking, their levels are lower. And you take somebody that has a chronic neurodegenerative condition, traumatic brain injury, MS, stroke, all these nerve cells tend to dump out their NAD and they don't work right. And what I found is, and this is very simply, it has to be given intravenously. You can't take, it's hard to do this orally. These are things that you can't take oral supplements. I give intravenous NAD and I have seen immediately improvement in neurologic symptoms with patients. It's temporary, but it's optimistic because then let's kick in the stem cells and get the growth you know, the wound healing, so this becomes normal. Uh, you know, you, that, that you're functioning more normally. So that's what I talk about rebooting cells, not just NAD, but there's other things. Exosomes to me are rebooting your cells, rebooting your body. Those exosomes are gonna go anywhere and the body's gonna soak them up and use them where they need to. So anyway, that's kind of where I, I went to in this book and where I really found out, what I look at is personal maintenance. Everybody's got a car, a boat, lawnmower, you know, things in the house, and you're always doing maintenance, okay? You tell somebody to spend $15,000 one time and reboot his system, and he'll say, I'll go buy a motorcycle. I, I've seen that many times. And it, to me, it's so simple. $15,000 or so, you know, and you're rebooting your system. And when I see people immediately improve, um, I will tell you this, I'm 70 years old. When I was 62, I had a telomere test done that tells uh, these telomeres, think in terms of a shoestring. And at the end of the shoestring are these little plastic aglets. Those are telomeres. The shoestring's DNA. So every time the DNA replicates as your cells reproduce, the telomeres can shorten. And pretty soon you become 80 years old and the telomeres say, DNA, no more replication. Okay. Well, when I was 62, my biologic age by my telomere measurements was 56. I thought, okay, I'm doing pretty good. You know? Well, I continue to follow a health program, but um, I also have gone through a rebooting of my system, the things that I talk about as far as personal maintenance. And I took a peptide called a pitalon. A, it, it, a peptide simply is this. The body has large biologic proteins. You can take a little snip out of that, and then you have a peptide. These peptides have specific biologic activities. There's one, this epitalon was discovered and patented by a, a Russian scientist in 1987 or something like that. So the Americans have ignored it, okay? All the longevity studies with epitalon in Russia look very, very good. And there are some studies there that actually show telomeres get longer. Okay, so I took a course of epitalon. I mean, you're talking about, you know, some subcutaneous injections for three months and that's it, okay? Well, chronologic age 70, my biologic age 54, okay? Right, you, know, I, you know, that's, you know, at least I'm the same. <laughs> that's all I can say. But you know, that's just an example of things that I look at as far as rebooting. And again, I don't think this is anything you can pass on to the total population. I think that's part of the thing with the pandemic is darn it, you know, they're trying to figure out how do you manage this for a large population. But the personal fitness, I mean, not only for the, for the um, coronavirus, 
but for longevity, I think is very, very important. So I think with that, I'm just going to shut up. I, I, I just would appreciate questions because I know people have a lot of questions about things. All right. Very good. Well, um, uh, I have a lot of questions. Uh, first of all, iodine, you know, I grew up in the Soviet Union. So that was the medicine of choice for just about everything. They put iodine uh, on every, uh, you know, if you have a cut or a sore throat, iodine. You walk into a doctor's office, I still remember that smell of iodine. So I, I think, and I think most people are deficient in iodine in the United States as well, uh, because they used to add it to our food, right? Supply, mm -hmm. so our salt, our bread. Um, and um, so I want to uh, introduce Jose, who uh, came out here with uh, uh, Alana, who are fabulous. They're the uh, water and air doctors. Uh, so Jose, if you could take like five, 10 minutes, just introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about what you do. Um, Cause I think it's just so important. Jose Grolon, founder. Thank you. Much. Thank you. How are you? Unified Solutions. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, um, I am making sure that people see both of our names here. Yay. Uh, so let's see. Uh, so yeah, well, thank you very much for having me. And uh, uh, Dr. Joseph, thank you very much for being here as well. I mean, it's a great pleasure. Very good. Uh, you know, water is as important as nutrition. It really is. So I want to listen. That's right. That's right. It's true. Um, I actually was going to talk about homeostasis, you know, in terms of how people should be balancing their lives and how water can help. But obviously other things are very important, such as nutrition, definitely. So we want to go around um, talking about a few things. And if you don't mind, Alex, um, can we share the screen for a second? Please. Awesome. So let's see here. I'm going to put this on this mode. And we will be now sharing Screen number one, I think. There we go. Okay, so hopefully this looks clear. Very good. Um, so I guess Yelena can start because I, you know, she decided to take over the air purification side because of the COVID, you know, and and other things that we're having right now in terms of pandemics, um, in which we have a specific type of patented system that can we move, you know, specific particles, uh, including viruses? So, you know, yeah, Yelena, go. Thank you, partner. Uh, thank you, Alex. Uh, yes, uh, specifically in these conditions, we are concerned with air quality and uh, do we inhale microbes, bacteria, viruses, how we can save ourselves, protect ourselves, right? So our um, specific air purification system that we offer is um, disinfecting filtration system technology, and it traps microorganisms and inhibits growth through microbiostasis condition and moves or viruses, airborne viruses specifically. And what it does, especially with the COVID-19, um, it's um, capable of removing a small range of particles as 0 0.08, and in size, it's like 1.6 microns in size. And the technology, which is disinfecting filtration system, is tested to be efficient as 99.99%. So um, I'm very sure when you put it in your house system, in the house um, or res uh, commercial as well, it's applicable. So it's portable for the house, portable for the offices, or you can use centralized already existing con air conditioning system to put it in. And it's pretty much covers 360 degrees co coverage area. It also disinfects as um, as soon as as little as in 10 minutes, and in 30 minutes the whole area coverage as big as 12 um, hundred square feet. So you can protect your family at home. You can protect from lead, mold, dust, pollen, smoke, any gases and any allergens that you can um, 
in the pantry in the house, and in the office area and the workspace. So pretty much um, it's used in hospitals, it's used in military, it's used in houses, and you name it, it's really effective. Definitely recommend you heal yourself and you know, for better sleep, for better lungs, for, <laughs> for your sinuses, you name it. Yeah, definitely. So it's a clinical grade um, system that and it's so so unique on how it actually is. Now I'm going to talk about the technicalities of it. I just want to say you left did a really good job. Yeah. <laughs> so so the fact is like you know imagine all these filters that are like HEPA filters and other filters like Merc 13 and so forth that they say hey you know it removes certain viruses up to three microns and so forth and yet these viruses are so small much smaller than three microns and you're thinking. How is it possible to remove these things? So physically, it's hard to remove. But this system is a, if you can see here in the picture, it has these, these thunders, so to speak, and it's electricity. So it's basically a shock that is produced when viruses or particles pass these grid. And they tend to gather together because a negative ion is induced into these particles in a way where they, they basically melt into like one bowl and become so so large that the filter can trap it and that's why this thing is so effective so like Yelena was saying in 10 minutes it's about 80 percent removal and about 30 minutes is almost 100 percent 99.99 percent of viruses or part or particles of any type that that can go as little as 0 0.007 microns which this guy does so I cannot emphasize more in terms of how we should really be, you know, carrying ourselves with, with, with in terms of the air quality that we're breathing, um, especially in the Northeast where the air pollution is so high and uh, people are not aware of it. And all they do is just, you know, take an inhaler and think that's enough, but it's really just, you know, suppressing just the, the symptoms. It's not really fixing the, the real cause. So if you're spending a lot of time indoors, you want to make sure that you have good quality air because indoor air is much more polluted than outside uh, and outside is really polluted by the way um so with that said i'm going to speak maybe for a couple more minutes about water and it's going to be hopefully quick um so the body as we all know is composed of a lot of water as you can see here uh, up, you know as little as 50 percent basically and if you can see in the small fonts there the brain has 73 percent roughly kidneys 80 even bones have 22 percent of water so what not to do? My advice, when you open the faucet, you're thinking, well, you know, I'm going to drink from the faucet because the, the water is great, whatever. If you ever do that, at least never, ever open the hot side and think that it's going to be safe enough. A lot of people, you know, open the hot, hot side of the faucet to do uh, maybe like oatmeal or tea. You don't want to do that. And there are many reasons for that. The main reason is because most of the contaminants are sitting through these hot, you know, uh, metals, which is the pipes and also the, the tank, the water heater and so forth. On top of that, you are melting small, small amounts of, of heavy metals that you still cannot see. And it's gonna be harder to remove from your organs, like the, your kidneys and your, and your um, black, you know, um, so basically the kidney um, for the most part. Um, you wanna make sure that you, at least if worst case scenario, you go to, to the cold side and minimally, you want to filter it by removing the VOCs, the PFAS, if possible, some kind of carbon, and high-end carbon. But we always emphasize on purifying it because there's so much garbage in there, uh, microplastics, the you know specific metals, um, the things that are injected into the water, the the chemicals that are added to the water. So when you boil water, people think, well, you know, I'm going to take from the cold side and I'm going to boil it is not enough because the bottom layer of boiled water is is where the condensation is was where the high concentration of contaminants especially solids are sitting you know because they by way they go down um unknown places like we said con um, containers exposed to extreme heat or cold which means okay so now bottled water you don't want you want to make sure you don't really use those plastics uh, if you can just get rid of them because they are coming from places where it's been sitting in, under the sun or in the snow, for example, or in a truck overnight. 
and then these metals or, or you know may, may be exposed and other contaminants from the plastics that come off because it's made of petroleum and other things and by expanding and contracting the plastics some of the metals also come off and you don't see them but if you bring it to a lab you see that there are traces of metal and other things in those bottles um also i did this when i was a kid i drank from the hose and i i you know it tasted horrible but i was thirsty <laughs> but never uh, use a hose just take that hose uh, away and and you know if you have to go to the bed worst case scenario you don't have any way of drinking just a little sip of water uh but try to avoid that that material because it's not really for consumption you know at all um what to do you want to create a pro-immune habit like eat healthy just like the dr uh joseph said um well-balanced meals Regular physical activity is a very, you know, good thing to do. I'm sure, obviously, you want to make sure you talk to your physician about how much you can do. Um, enough rest. You need to sleep a lot of hours. You know, I say that between six to eight. If eight is what you can do, that's even better. Because uh, there is a study known that uh, between six and eight hours, that's when you get most of your REM sleep. And your brain actually functions better after that because of that rest. Um, reducing stress no matter what, you know, whichever way you can. And the homeostasis enhanced hydration, which is one thing that I was going to talk, but it's, it takes a long time. And basically, it's just drinking enough water, which here we go. Critical role water that, the, that the, the water plays is that the volume of your blood and your pressure gets, you know, balanced. The excretion of toxins, you diffuse the gases from your, from your body and sweating, which is very, very healthy. Now, what to do? I suggest drinking up to a gallon of healthy water, you know, purify it, and then enhance it if you want to. It helps your body burn store fat. It flushes the toxins, it flushes the toxins from your body and prevents constipation. Your kidneys don't need extra help from your liver because it'll it'll be able to metabolize stored fat more effectively. And if you're not drinking enough water, your liver will be forced to help your kidneys detoxify your body. This is the color that I've been always sh sharing with people. So if you're, this is the, the red line right here. If your urine <laughs> is this color or darker, that means you're not drinking enough water. That's one way that the military actually measures how much water they need to drink. Um, and it's basically just making sure that you have a lightly yellow urine. So the water treatment, tap water travels through old pipes and then it comes into your house and then into your food because you're serving food with it and then into your body because you're eating it and then goes back into sewage right because you're flushing toilets including your pharmaceuticals and other things which is going back to the treatment eventually and unfortunately they cannot remove all these other things that people are you know consuming such as you know um contaminants like uh hermos, hep uh, you know herbicides uh any kind of uh, pharmaceutical any kind of of junk food and so forth all that is going back to the water treatment slowly and unfortunately all, all they do is they remove the solids the big things and they add chemicals to make it look pretty and bring it back to the pipes so now we have that cycle again tap water going through the pipes again which again they're so old exact you know centuries old and these are the things for the most part that they cannot remove uh, effectively because it's too expensive plus they say, you know, well, EPA allows us to have certain amounts. So there you go. All these things can, um, in, a, in a specific amount, be harmful. Um, what we say, Purified Solutions, the final barrier, the Water Quality Association calls it the final barrier on how things should be done. So they, they recommend to do your whole house and at least do that and drink. We go further. We want to purify the water because the whole house system many times cannot purify and because you need specific media in there to remove other things and a lot of contact time also as well to remove things so we want to purify down here in this light blue area you have a system that is under the sink and is removing much more than what the whole house can remove because remember that this dark blue light uh, line here is the pipes in the house you may have old fittings made of lead you know composite and so forth you don't want to be drinking traces of that at all. Um, this we don't have to go through, but basically it's the level of 
purification, you want to go as deep as you can, removing as much as you can uh, up to the micron levels, not, not something that is like five or 10 microns. You want to go down to the one tenth of a micron if possible, uh, which is like reverse osmosis. And then you can enhance it to, to make the, the water back again into a balanced you know, state so it's not so aggressive. Um, so we have systems like these. You can see the picture here from the smallest to the largest, all the way from a simple you know, 20 inch filter uh, to systems that can remove other things and a high end you know, system that we're actually looking into installing into a doctor nearby also is pretty soon. Uh, the one on the right is a whole house reverse osmosis. So then you have the point of view systems as a second option, which is what we consume, you know, we use that water to consume. And we have systems here that either just makes the water alkaline and filters the water, but it's not good enough for places where the water is recycled, like in Long Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, for example, is more appropriate for like New York City water because it's coming from the surface, it's from a river, rather than down the ground where everything is just falling there and they cannot remove all that. You want to have better systems for that. Um, like this one here in the middle, let's go back. This one in the middle here, or this one here that enhances the water or dispensers like these. And this is us basically. So I wanna thank you guys. Um, hopefully I was not too quick, uh, but basically just make sure that you purify the water. They're just Don't just think about the fact that, you know, they tell you that the water is safe. Um, they don't tell you that it's not safe until it's too late. So just make sure you are always protected. All right, thank you very much. You find the source, not the cause. Correct. <laughs> Thank Very you. handsome picture. You guys look great. <laughs> Thank you. And well, Jose and Yelena, um, interesting because, you know, what you're introducing really are things that it's not widely accepted, but think about terms of a school, municipal building, as far as the ventilation. And the other thing, you know, when you're talking about water filtration, everybody, yeah, I'm going to do this and that with the water I drink. How about the shower? Your skin absorbs through the skin yeah. and whatever's in the water there. And that's where, again, just a, some sort of filter for the shower is very, very important. Particularly if I have anybody with cancer, that's a strict, you know, you get this water purification, period. On that topic, um, I think water filtration is mandatory. Should be. Yeah. You live on Long Island and you don't have a whole house water filtration system. Uh, I think that's um, uh, a lifestyle malpractice. If you have your children filtering your water with their little tiny livers, you should be arrested and put in prison. That's just wrong. Well, I've been here. A little facetious, but I'm also being a little serious. You know, you got to have a water filtration system in your house. Uh, Jose, in fact, we need to update my filter under my sink, I think. When you get a moment. You're on my list. When you're in my neighborhood, please come do that. Will do. Thank you. Absolutely. I have a I have an amazing system. I have a whole house system uh, that I've had for already like 15 years. It's awesome. It's self cleaning. I don't have to do anything with it virtually, and uh, my water is pristine. And then Jose installed a filter under my sink, uh, which filters my drinking water. And I'm just a water snob. I want the best possible water for my drinking. And when I bathe this beautiful body. <laughs> <laughs> It's got to be, it's got to be with quality water. Yes, absolutely. And that's just, yes. yeah, and you know, uh, speaking about the, the shower filters quickly. So another factor is that we're also inhaling these volatile organic compounds, including gases like chlorine. With the hot water, with the hot shower. Absolutely. Hot and, and then, you know, that's, that's getting into your lungs directly, your bloodstream right away. And we do tests where we put a, a chlorine tester that, that, turns the water a little yellow to see how much chlorine you have. But if you put your hand just like maybe for 30 seconds in that cup, and then you put the tester, it never turns yellow because your skin absorbs mm. it so quickly. <laughs> I like it's that. crazy. I like that. And Great. people think that taking a one minute shower is, is not long enough. <laughs> <laughs> you let, you did a 10 hours job. with a filter on it. Yeah. You did an excellent job. Jose did an okay job. <laughs> Thank not, you. not bad. He didn't do bad. <laughs> you know, Alex, Alex, you were talking about Long Island water and that sort of thing. And one of the routine testing that I do is through with a little infrared laser on the skin, and it actually picks up as the beam penetrates through the skin, depending on the mineral or whatever, it will absorb or reflect or whatever. And I can get tissue levels. And what's interesting when you talk about Long Island is 
I can tell you certain parts of Long Island, yep, cadmium is going to be up here. Oh, mercury's up down here. I just see this, you know, this sort of thing. Well, great. So let's talk about exosomes. Uh, let's okay. talk about um, whatever our guests here want to talk about. It. If you guys have questions, Anne, Darlene, uh, Georgian, uh, Randall, if you guys have questions, please let us know specifically what you want to discuss. And Dr. Basilovac um, and uh, Jose and Yelena will be happy to uh, address it. But meanwhile, I want to talk about uh, exosomes for restoring optimal function. You mentioned uh, $15,000 for the optimization process. And, you know, I think most of us have been taught that spending any money on our health is somehow abhorrent <laughs> because healthcare should be free. We should have socialized medicine. We should have, you know, Canada-like medicine, um, Obamacare kind of medicine. But all of that medicine, it's bad medicine. What it does is it manages your chronic disease once they have already developed. And I think the system, the way it's set up currently is actually, uh, um, it's involved in the process. It's, it's, the, it's the context for the creation of all the chronic disease that we have and we're dealing with. And um, so if you don't want to have chronic disease or you actually want to function at the peak level of health expression, then there's no way around it other than to make an investment and create a direct relationship between a physician like Dr. Basilovac and your personal self. If you don't have the money, take out a loan and invest that money into yourself because you're worth it. I mean, just think about like over my lifetime, I've made, you know, let's say if, if I made $50,000 a year uh, over the last 20 years of my life, I made a, a lot of money, over a million dollars. If I'm a machine that made over a million dollars over 20 years, don't I deserve a little bit to keep the machine running? I mean, 15 grand, that's not a lot to ask. I had this woman that um, we were diagnosed with uh, arthritis about the same time, 15 years ago. I went one way. I, I went with Dr. Richard Lynch's. It cost me $10,000 out of pocket back then. She went the other way. She went completely allopathic. And uh, within three months, Dr. Lynch has cured me permanently of arthritis, uh, permanently, never had arthritis again in my life. And I was, I was almost a cripple back then. And she uh, has been disabled for the last, I don't know how many years. And this was a high powered executive. She was making like 250 grand a year. So for some reason, she couldn't see spending, making the investment, because I introduced her to my doctor. I said, listen, why should you give him a try? He's, he did an amazing thing with, with my health. But she was like, no, I'm not spending any money. He doesn't take my insurance. I'm going to go to these doctors. But all those doctors do is they manage the chronic disease. And that's not what we're looking to achieve. So not everything is going to be $15,000. But, um, you know, if, if you're going to work with Dr. Basilovac for the next you know, three months, nine months, you, you, you have to realize that it's going to be an investment, right? So I think that's an important piece of getting into, getting into your brain that, um, you know, if you really want to resolve the chronic illness, you have to take a virtually drastically different approach. So um, you spoke about uh, exosomes, and I don't think many of us are familiar with exosomes, Um but they have a very powerful way of restoring damaged body parts, damaged, worn out organs. Can you talk a little bit about that? How, does, how, do the, how do they work and what do you get them? Okay, let's go back to middle school, all right? You got a cell, all right? And inside the cell, you have these little vacuoles or, you know, that they contain things. These things inside the cell are called endosomes, and those are exosome or those are uh, biologic proteins in there. Sometimes those endosomes will be get squirted outside of a cell. So now it's an exosome. Those things that were inside that are going around the system. So they're basically just growth factors and the body will do this transferring uh, exosomes from one set of cells somewhere to another for healing principles. But again, these are things that just because of the environment, um, everything else with health, um, 
things are subtle, but part of what society says you're getting older, it's simply all of these things are wearing down on your cells, right? I started using the exosomes with guys with the joints and soft tissue injury because it does help heal all that. It actually uh, promotes healing and preventing surgery and other things from going on in there. Well, then I began using exosomes uh, systemically when I was dealing with systemic things. And again, you're just restoring normal biologic proteins in the cell so the cell is functioning better. Now, think in terms of this. I'm giving exosomes for whatever reason. And some of the observations that I've had over the years are, gee, doc, I don't have to use my reading glasses as much. Okay. Hey, doc, my kids were telling me for years I need a hearing aid. I don't need a hearing aid. I can hear pretty darn good right now. And I, a surprising one for me is this guy says, I couldn't taste food for 20 years. And after some exosomes and a treatment, everything like that, he's tasting as good as anywhere. And what I look at, I don't know if I can explain that biologically. I'm not that scientific. It, the body's working better. The cells are working better. That's what it means. And so when you see those kind of aspects and you're giving them for another reason, you know, you see a lot of things go on, chronic pains, that sort of thing. And exosomes are very, very good as far as an anti-inflammatory effect. So when you're talking about autoimmune conditions, which is probably 80% of what is going on in society, everything is autoimmune, something. Um, the exosomes help block that and can many times relieve patients that are having chronic autoimmune symptoms. So would this be considered uh, evidence-based medicine? No, <laughs> because, because the product isn't at that stage yet to make money, okay? Uh, no, but, but no, no, I'll be realistic with you. You know, I've been doing stem cells and exosome for 13 years. You know, I've probably done over a thousand cases and over 200 of these are IV cases. All right, so I look, pick up a little study from Europe, 20 patients, 50 here, none in the United States because they don't do this stuff, okay? But you pick it up elsewhere and it correlates with what I'm seeing with my own observation that's where I make my decision for the patient, right there, you know. But, you're, you know, I think what we're coming up to is with the FDA, they're going to start coming down on some of this stuff, I think. Well, uh, let, me, let me just say that um, it's funny because a lot of people ask me, uh, you know, I, I prefer evidence-based medicine. Uh, personally, I prefer results-based medicine. You know, evidence-based medicine, I don't care what happens in the Petri dish. I want to know what happens in my life. So if a doctor, I mean, when they, when they found the, that uh, uh, vitamin C cures scurvy, they didn't have uh, evidence-based medicine. They didn't have 10,000 subjects that they put through this, uh, through this process. They had 10 different people, the doctor that found this. He tried something with this one. He tried something else with this one. He tried something else with the third one. And then he saw that vitamin C cured the fourth one. And then they uh, implement the vitamin C and it seemed to resolve uh, scurvy, which is a pretty deadly disease. So and you're talking I, about observation and experience. Exactly right. Exactly right. And, and the thing about it is what I see in my experience, if, I've, if I see the same thing happen with 10 patients in a row, that helps me determine my judgment on how to deal with this, whether there's an evidence-based thing out there or not. Yeah, I don't, I don't trust the other medical system. Uh, because I've experienced it and it made absolutely zero sense to me from the first glance. Uh, you know, I went in there with uh, uh, the beginning stages of psoriasis with my insurance card after 13 years of 12 years of not using that insurance card. And uh, the, after a month waiting to see that doctor, he saw me for exactly three minutes, gave me a prescription, left the office. So I put, uh, they gave me a steroid cream for the psoriasis I had like right above my ear. So I put the cream on, it went away, evidence-based. And then uh, three days later, it explodes all over my head. So I put more cream on and then you know, my whole head was covered with psoriasis. So I understood that all that cream is doing is suppressing the symptom, evidence-based, suppressing the symptom. I want results-based. Get to the root cause of my chronic illness, whatever my deficiencies or toxicities might be, resolve them, fix my gut, 
so I can live and function optimally for the rest of my life. I'm 52 today. I got 48 years to go. And I don't want to succumb to some kind of a nonsensical chronic problem because I was deficient in vitamin D for a decade or two. It's just so ridiculous. A $10 supplement is going to undermine my entire life. It's not the kind of medicine I want. So actually what I did more recently is um, I created a relationship with the doctor that I work with. Uh, I became a member of her practice. And now our job is to keep me optimized for the duration of my life. So some of the stuff she, she's been doing with me is uh, the peptides, which is amazing. I mean, um, I don't think anybody's ever heard of peptides. Which, which which peptides are you taking? I don't know. Okay. Whatever ones she gave me. <laughs> peptides. She tells me takes peptides. I take peptides. She puts um, uh, vitamins in my vein. I take those. And uh, all you're doing is you're rebooting your cells back to the normal biochemical level. They function normally. That's all you're doing. Well, here's here's evidence based. Here's evidence uh, evidence based versus results based. Fifteen years ago, Dr. Richard Lynchitz used his approach to permanently resolve my uh, uh, my arthritis part, psoriatic arthritis. The psoriasis I've had for fifteen years it was getting progressively worse, and Rick had passed away some years ago, so uh, he was just getting started in this whole thing. So I don't think he really knew exactly what was going on, and the medicine wasn't the same. So uh, then about five years ago, I had uh, chronic fatigue, brain fog, and emotional instability. So I fixed that, results-based. Today, the doctor I'm working with, she's 50% uh, of my psoriasis, which covered 75% of my body, dis uh, dissipated, completely, completely like gone, just uh, a major, major impact with all this stuff. So this is results-based. I want results-based medicine wherever, whatever it is that I'm dealing with. Much more powerful. No, that just makes a lot of sense. I mean, you know, that's what I look at is observation and experience. But again, my comment would be probably 80% of Americans will never buy into it. And 80% of my colleague, medical colleagues would never buy into it. Well, there's, there's a specific reason why, you know, if you remember the movie, The Matrix. Yes. Remember how they were, uh, they thought they were living their lives, everything was fine, but they lived in those little pods and they, the, the robots were sucking the energy out of them. It's not much different today. You have a $4 trillion system of healthcare that is sucking the energy and life force out of us, supporting this monstrosity. And uh, it's using all of these resources to brainwash the doctors and to brainwash the public. I mean, how many commercials have you seen over your lifetime where... Uh, a lifelong problem was cured in 30 seconds, 15 seconds. First, it starts all black and white. The person is in pain. Everything's horrible. They're depressed. Then they pop a pill and the sun comes out. The flowers are blooming. And all this happens in 15 seconds. They need another 15 seconds to tell you all the adverse effects that are going to happen with this medication. But within 30 seconds, the whole problem is resolved. And how many of those did we see over our lifetime? A million? So we've come to uh, believe that only a drug can cure and prevent the disease. And we've also come to believe that it should happen in 30 seconds. And we've come to believe that somebody else should be paying for it. That's a recipe for disaster, doctor. <laughs> yes, it is. I mean, you know, basically what I try to do is lay things out. You know, first enough, gather enough data that I'm making a some sort of scientific clinical data that can give me help me make a decision but then lay it out on the table in lay terms so the patient and their family understands it as long as they understand it they're going to come up with the right decision for them what are these uh ceos uh, guys if you have questions please you know ask the questions and i'll give you a book excellent book life transforming because you know what look at that uh dr basilovic the man is 70 years old. He looks like, uh, you know, a ballet dancer. The guy looks amazing. So fit. When I'm 70, I pray that I look like you and I'm working towards it. I know it doesn't happen by accident. So you are the embodiment of this message, which I think is so crucially important that we can live our life, uh, whether we're in our 60s, our 70s, our 80s. I don't know if you ever met uh, Dr. Jeff, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Life. You know yes. Yes, I know him personally. He's 80, and he uh, looks like a 25-year-old bodybuilder. 
So it's not our age. It's like um, when the car has a clogged fuel filter, it's going to run horrible. And it doesn't matter what kind of gas you put in, high octane, you know, super booster, it doesn't matter. If the filter is clogged, the first thing you need to do is change that filter or clean it out. With us, it's the same thing. When our liver becomes clogged, our kidneys aren't functioning well, our digestion is no good, our colon is all clogged up, you know, we're not going to function well no matter what you eat after that point. Get all that stuff fixed. Get your vitamin D up. Make sure you're absorbing vitamin C. Get your testosterone where it's supposed to be, your estrogen down where it's not supposed to be. You know what they found in me after I did my testing like five years ago? My estrogen was off the hook because of all the xenoestrogens in the environment, I imagine. No, my that's exactly it is. It's the environment, exactly. And my testosterone was in the toilet. So I'm growing breasts. I'm emotional all the time. I can't deal with people. Any any slight or insult, I start crying. Yeah, so it's just like you can't function in the world like that when your body's upside down. When your body is optimized, you become powerful, you become confident, you become uh, strong, you become effective in your work. And as entrepreneurs, as business people, uh, as uh, um, you know, people, people, when we function optimally as moms or dads, we are much more effective and we enjoy life uh, much more. Thank you, Jose, for sharing that. Uh, Randall has a question uh, to, for Dr. Vasilovac. Have you had great number of success whereby you were able to address a patient's health issue by transitioning a patient's drug regimen to a supplement nutraceutical with phase two data and no known side effects and not phase three drug approvals? That's a deep question, uh, Randall. Well, that, that's a deep question. And I think the best answer I can give you is this. When I put, okay, you get a patient with a chronic problem, like multiple sclerosis, and they're going to 10 different physicians, and that's their life, back and forth, physicians, treatment, this and that. And you go through a rebooting program, and 15 of the symptoms disappear. You have a more direct concise program for the patient. They're functioning better. And I always look at this as what I do, I do an overhaul. You want an oil change? Conventional medicine. That's the way I look at it. Yep. And uh, to answer your question, Randall, also, I mean, I don't know if you could- Well, I, okay, and I, I'm sorry, if, if I would go one step further, you know, people like that, if they're on multiple medications, they end up coming off a lot of those medications. That's that's the best answer I can give you is- right. So yes. what, medication is what? That's like duct tape. Uh, yes, you're just getting your system to work better, function better, I don't and know. you can get rid of a lot of these things. All right, so I mean, what are the what are the, uh, the three major components of chronic illness in my mind? It's a deficiency of important nutrition. It's toxicity, the heavy metals, the parasites, the mold. Um, you know, whatever else. And the damaged gut lining, or maybe the damaged gut lining first, because then we're not absorbing the nutrition, we are, uh, become toxic with different things that the body now becomes allergic to, it's inflamed. So when you fix those three things, a lot of, 90% of the time, you won't need the medication. I, you know, I don't know what people are dealing with, but 90% of the time, you're going to resolve the chronic illness that you're dealing with. And you know, the, system, the, the, the system is telling you yeah, it's all nonsense. Once you develop a chronic illness, it's incurable. You have cancer, incurable. You have uh, autoimmune condition, incurable. Diabetes, there's no cure. But I've seen in results-based medicine, all of those things get resolved permanently. I don't know if you could call it a cure, but I would. The body wants to heal itself if you help it. Exactly right. Good question, Randall. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we're talking about optimizing the body, making the proper investment, developing a lifelong relationship with a human optimization expert, make sure, making sure you get a water filtration system in your house, because all of this is for naught if you don't have quality water and quality food. Like, those are the first things you got to resolve. And then um, make the investment in yourself. Why are we so quick to make an investment in our house, in our car, in our vacation, in our jewelry, in our shoes, in our briefcases, in our purses, 
but we're so slow to make it in the most important valuable possession that you have, which is your body, your mind, um, you know, your, your physical self, primarily because we've been taught that that is not important, that you should neglect it, you should not worry about it, you have health insurance, uh, once you develop a problem, we'll take care of you, it's all nonsense. And today it's worse than ever because, you know, the system at $4 trillion, what do they offer you for your health insurance? Now you're paying fourteen to $20,000 a year uh, with your employer subsidizing it, what are you getting for that? The uh, co-pays are ridiculous. The deductible is obscene. Um, like what? What do you get? And the medicine that you get for it is 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 um, third rate. It's like triage care. It's ridiculous. So Dr. Basilevic is one in a million. One in a million doctor who happens to be here in New York City, and uh, I love uh, introducing you, Dr. Basilevic, and doctors like you to people because. You know, you guys transform my life on so many different levels. And I so, so believe that you will transform the lives of anyone who really is willing to take the step in your direction. And I know that when they take one step, you'll take 12 steps. I mean, that's the way you guys are. You're just so generous with your time, your desire to help. Once you commit to somebody, there's, there's no holding you back. Well, see, my my commitment is this. If you're dealing with somebody with a chronic condition and you're going through wound healing, I don't see them one time. No, we go through, they go through a rehabilitation program and we see how they, they um, reassess how they're doing on the wound healing. I may follow them for a year or two before they're completely healed. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, it's what, what, what I found ridiculous is that uh, over the last 15 years, I've developed a chronic illness three times in my life. And the way it happened was, looking back, very, very clear to me today. It wasn't so clear while I was in it. But first, I gained 20 pounds, inexplicably. Like, I didn't change anything. I didn't change my diet. I didn't change my exercise regimen. But all of a sudden, I gained 20 pounds. And then I was diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis. When Dr. Lynch has worked with me after those 90 days, once he optimized me, the first thing that happened was I dropped 20 pounds and then permanently resolve the arthritis. Then about five years ago, uh, I developed brain fog, um, chronic fatigue, and my emotion, I became all, like super sensitive emotionally. And I started working with the doctor and what she did was she optimized me. And the first thing that happened was I dropped 20 pounds. Then my brain fog lifted, my brain became sharp. Uh, my energy level went through the roof. Uh, and my emotions stabilized because we dropped my uh, estrogen and we raised my testosterone. Uh, and then again, about a year ago, the same thing happened. I gained 20 pounds inexplicably. And I just think it's so bizarre that we live our life like that. I mean, after I think 30 or 35, you inevitably are going to become deficient and toxic and your gut is going to get damaged and you're going to develop some kind of a chronic illness. Well, Alex, let me point this out to you. You know, these are such subtle things you gained 20 pounds. For you, it was important. It meant something. For a lot of people, oh, I'm just getting older, gained 20 pounds, you know, and it's, the, it's an early subtle sign you're beginning this degenerative process. So anyway. Yeah, no, I, I see it so clearly. And there's no reason for it. Once people develop chronic illness, you know, it's like so, this, that's why I think this, this system isn't broken. The healthcare system, it's evil. Primarily because it feeds on our on our misery. It feeds on our misery. That's where the profit is. When you have no other choice, you're going to pay whatever they ask you. You're going to sell your house. You're going to sell your car. You're going to sell your spouse. You're going to make sure you find the money to pay them whatever they want. And that's where they want you, unfortunately. And um, I'm not playing that game. Not playing that game. Um, let's get, let's get Jose and Yelena back in here. All right. Very good. You guys did really a good job. Really, really. Uh, I love the dynamic pair, the, the beautiful air promoter and the handsome water promoter. Amazing. Amazing. You guys are great. Um, my pleasure. So what do you, what do you guys think of all this? Dr. Basilovic. Awesome. Right. 
Amazing. Did you, know, did you know you had a doctor like this in your in your backyard? I would love to have him in my back back in my yard for sure. Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. I will be visiting him every day, just asking questions about you know my. I, I want to make sure that I'm at the optimal possible way because you know I know so many people who just because of the fact that they have insurance, self insurance, they say, you know, I'm going back to my doctor. And when you when they come back to me and say, you know, I ask them, what did they what did the doctor do to you? Like you know, what did they say to do? They go, well, they gave me the prescription. It's some kind of uh, medication that has, you know, worse, you know, effects. And and sometimes as little as just a Tylenol. And I'm like, you know, you may be covering your pain or whatever you have, but the problem is still there. No one is telling you what to do or not or what not to do to avoid this problem. It's just like, you know, keep doing it because I'm making money out of this. <laughs> exactly yeah. right. Well, let's take, uh, let's take Jose and Yelena here as subjects. Can I put you guys on the spot a little bit? Absolutely, sure. please. I mean, you're, you're health conscious. You eat well. Clearly, you have very nice air and very good water, I imagine. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes, have it. Um, but do you, know, do you know your vitamin D level? Ah, uh, yes. Mine has to be between 60 and 80. So right now it's 64. Wow. Yelena, you? Don't have the latest numbers. Not going to lie. All right. No, that's, I appreciate it. Listen, that you're, you're like 99% of the population. We have no idea. And the only time I, I learned about my vitamin D level was when I was already dealing with some kind of chronic illness. Oh, your vitamin D is like 17. Why, why is it 17? Well, because I'm not assimilating vitamin D and I try to get sun, I supplement. I'm not assimilating it for some reason. Uh, I'm also- you, Yeah, I'm sorry. To tell you the truth, when I changed my diet, I became vegan and I, my body was turning, you know, like the healthy way and I felt it. I saw all the symptoms disappear, like my chronic fatigue, uh, arthritis, you know, like I didn't have a lot of conditions, but my weight stabilized. I felt great. I was exercising with, with no pain. I was doing yoga. It, it, it made me feel so much better. I did the blood work, but I didn't have any issues to complain. So I'm not checking it on a monthly basis. Maybe I'll, you know, I'll do it soon. But based on just changing the diet, changing the environment, it helped me tremendously. And I advertise to everybody to just take care of yourself and see what you eat, see how you, you know, like move around, move, just get up and move. Don't, don't be lazy. Absolutely. Don't, don't don't blame on you. Have your sort of time. That's not an excuse. Everybody has twenty four hours. And the body is always finding ways to to heal, to to be better. I mean, when you do exercise, you notice how your muscles tend to get tighter. Your body gets you know take shape. Your body is doing something, and that happens in matters of seconds. It starts to do things. So why not always keep that in mind and, and make sure that you have the best in your body, whether it's water, air, or food, or just your thoughts, your subconscious is so powerful. I mean, just thinking about something bad is as bad as doing it, according to your body. Well, you also, know, Yelena and Jose, you, you talk about purifying water and air. Well, you know, the same thing. When you think about vitamin D, first of all, it, we call it a vitamin, but if you look at the chemical structure, it's a hormone. Okay, so if it's a hormone dropping like your other hormones, why not pay attention to it? Absolutely. The other thing is when you look at the uh, conventional medicine, they always have a, a range. Now, okay, the range is 30 to 100, and you're sitting at 40, and the doctor says, you're in the proper range. Okay, <laughs> here's what I look at. What am I trying to do with the vitamin D? Number one, immune function. But if you push the vitamin D up to the 100 range, it helps with sugar metabolism. If you've got type 2 diabetes as an adult, okay? Uh you know, the things that it does. And the other thing too, to think in terms of is cholesterol is used by the body to make vitamin D as well as sex hormones. If those are suboptimal, your cholesterol goes up. So you're a 55 year old guy, go to your doctor for your annual checkup. And he goes, you're doing pretty good. Need to lose a little bit of weight. Oh, got cholesterol's up. Here's a pill for you. All right. So cholesterol is up there because he's suboptimal. If you optimize vitamin D and the sex hormones, cholesterol comes down with no medication. Absolutely. It just happens. Your body does it. Yeah. It does it. Yeah. And, you know, again, pushing somebody who has a lot of uh, inflammatory symptoms or arthritic, arthritic type symptoms, pushing the vitamin D level up to 100 has a tremendous anti-inflammatory effect. 
And conventional medicine taught me, oh, you're going to get vitamin D toxic. I have several patients for inflammation are sitting at a vitamin D level of 120. Nobody's toxic. 120? I thought, I thought the limit was 100. That's conventional that's medicine. That's the range. That's, the, that's their range in conventional medicine. You go to 120? Sometimes my patients are living at 120 and they're fine. Well, it's all, and, it's, so. it, shouldn't be, it should be individualized. It, everybody's different. Right, everybody's right. different. That's why it should not be ranged for everybody. Well, see, and Alex, you said, you know, your vitamin D level was low. You know, there's some simple things in the environment, such as sodium benzoate, that cut off your vitamin D supply. Sodium, sodium benzoate, where do you find that? Oh, that's a preservative they put in everything. Anything that's in a packaged food is going to have sodium benzoate. In it. I don't really eat packaged foods. No, except, but, uh, but you know, again, maybe years ago or something, if that played a part, but I see patients that are, they live in the sun all the time and they have low vitamin D levels. So it's not just being out in the sun. Uh, that, that To me, it's the important thing. That is one thing that should be measured annually with your checkup. So. Well, great guys. Uh, if you don't have any other questions, uh, I'm going to start wrapping it up a little bit. Um, Randall, excellent question. I'm going to send you a copy of this book by Dr. Jason Fung. Uh, I know you're going to love it. Here's my email. I just need your mailing address. There you go. Um, all right. Very good. So any final words? We'll start with uh, Yelena. Well, it's a pleasure being here and get introduced to Dr. Joseph Parchevic. Um, definitely will need your information, maybe, you know, I'll become a patient. <laughs> mm -hmm. that was, so it was very informative. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you, Elena. Jose? We love this so much that uh, we want to be patients of everybody, for sure. I mean, uh, you know, just, we'll get in the to this. It's, it's just the fact that it's such a, a, um, a great way of looking at things at a different angle and realizing that, you know, something is hiding behind the, the curtain that, you know, the people that want to make money uh, are, are just making that curtain, you know, always covering everything. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate it. And everybody else that is watching and hoping that you get to learn something here because every time that Alex brings this video, this, this uh, you know, webinar or live event, uh, and it's been recorded, you can watch it and, and learn so much about the things you can do about your body or someone else that you love, some, some family member or friend or someone, you know, become that person, like a go-to person that you can say, oh, you know, you can go to this, this website or Facebook and, and look at this video and you can learn so much. The fact, I mean, I didn't know that, that, having higher than 80 on vitamin D was applicable uh, healthy wise, because my doctor was like, Jose, well, you know, too much vitamin D is bad also. I said, yeah, but I'd rather have more than less. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> so I had to, I had to get my own vitamin Ds because they will not give it to me. I'm like, you know, I, I can't be at 30. Come on. Oh, but 20 is good enough. No, 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 no. I, I need to be at 60 minimum. Um, so anyway, long story short, your body is a temple that you will never be able to, to, um, to thank unless it's too, you know, before it's too late. You want to be able to, to do this before something else happens because your body will give you signs. And sometimes you take it for granted. And a little pain may be something, but it's probably a sign telling you, hey, take care of me. Make sure you rest. Make sure you eat well. You stay active. You do, you know, mental health as well. That's, I, I think, is the most important thing in your body the mind because once you lose it it doesn't matter how healthy you look once your body once your brain is out you're out so you know water is 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 everything and air and and obviously things that you put in your body because what you eat what you drink even what you think you become awesome uh and dr Basilovac, uh first of all people can find you at drboss.com is that is that your drjboss.com drjboss.com yes uh, very excellent and um anyone who sees this video uh please reach out to dr basilovac he will transform your life so any final words no this has been good and i enjoyed you know the the air and the water again um, the air and the water duel yep <laughs> absolutely dr joseph i think we want a book from you 
We also you, want to book. You definitely want to book. You're a good yes. man. Yes. You have to pick it up in person, though. Um, and uh, as we complete this program, I just want to say that, um, you know, the most beautiful creation on this planet is not a bush. It's not a tree. It's not a field of flowers. It's not a mountain. It's not the ocean. It's not a sunset or a sunrise. It's you, the human being. And whatever investment you need to make in time or wealth uh, to make your life amazing, to make your body and your mind function at its very peak level of health expression, then you are absolutely worth that investment. I thank you all for being here, and I wish you good health and good times, my friends. Excellent. Thank, thank you very much.